So now, now let us continue and give an introduction to symmetry. So I mentioned the word symmetry several times uh, when we were talking about uh, the Bravais lattices. So actually it makes a lot of sense and it is also logical to classify our crystals based on the symmetry that they possess rather than the unit cells that is going to be used in order to construct them. Why? Because the unit cells is not necessarily unique, firstly. Second reason is that properties of that particular material such as elastic constants or thermal conductivity, they all will be reflecting the underlying symmetry that is present in the crystal lattice rather than you know what was chosen for the unit cell. Right. So, it makes a lot of sense to actually classify these crystal structures based on the symmetry <coughs> that they possess. Okay. All crystals possessing the same symmetry elements, we will see, we'll see what it means to say uh, symmetry elements in a bit, they belong to the same space group. We okay. <coughs> will be called, see so, uh, so just to motivate this idea of symmetry, let us take a look at uh, a planar lattice. Okay, this is the planar lattice that we are talking about. Okay, this is a planar 2D square uh, planar lattice, and and there are like how many lattice points are there here? One lattice point is there here. Okay, and at each lattice point, I am going to place an object that looks like this. Okay, maybe a square. Squ looks like a square. That is the motive and this is going to be repeated in all the three, all the two, the two directions. Now, if you look at it, what are the kinds of symmetry that you can actually see? Like for example, if you take, if you put a mirror here, the right hand side is being reflected on the left hand side, right. If you put a mirror here, the top is being reflected at the bottom and if you put a mirror here, this is being reflected like that and so on, right. There are like so many mirror planes, so to speak, okay. Then there also appears to be a fourfold, no, I should not use the word fourfold, there also used to appears to be a, if you rotate it by 90 degrees, the object coincides with itself, right. You can do it four times and you will look get exactly the same lattice or same 2D crystal, correct. Now what I am going to do is I am going to take this out and replace it with a stretched a pentagon okay, and it is somewhat oriented in a weird manner. Now this one, this the first square lattice that we talked about also had the same symmetry as here, right. It has all these symmetries, mirror planes, it also has a fourfold rotation, correct. But the second we put these pentagons here, we lost the fourfold rotations, okay. But this still seems to be having some symmetry, right. There is some symmetry associated with it. There seems to be one mirror plane like that, that is it. There is no mirror plane in this way. There is only one mirror plane that is reflecting this part to the other part. So the second I put a different motive, the symmetry of the underlying crystal lattice went away as we saw for several, as we saw for the 3D example uh, when I was explaining you know what a crystal is, right. So depending upon what you put there, the symmetry of the crystal structure of the lattice basically changes the symmetry of the lattice changes depending upon what you put at the lattice point. All crystals which possess the same symmetry elements are supposed to be in one group called as a space group. We will deal with that in detail as we go along. Once we know something about the space group symbol which we will learn, okay, we will learn and some additional information we can actually construct the entire crystal. So, the remaining couple of lectures are going to be focused on seeing how we can actually do that. Now, what was the, what other symmetry elements are actually present in this plane crystal? 
if you take a careful look at it if i repeat it in all the like a couple of more if i add a couple of more like that then you see additional uh, uh, symmetry elements basically appearing so obviously you have a mirror plane like this but then you have something else also you have this element being reflected about this line and then being moved forward a bit right this this pentagon is being or is being reflected and being moved forward so this if you take this as a unit cell and repeat it in two dimensions you would be able to generate the entire crystal structure this 2d crystal actually belongs to what is referred to as a space group cm okay, we will see what those things mean i just want to uh, introduce you to uh, the kind of stuff that we will be looking at okay this belongs to the space group cm centered c for centered m for mirror but what do with respect to what is the centering with respect to what the mirror exists is something we will see in the couple of in a couple of lectures so symmetry operations or set of operations which make the lattice coincide with itself that is the definition of symmetry okay a set of operations that you can do on this lattice so that it appears exactly the same after you do these operations you can't find out the difference Th that's those are the symmetry operations so there are basically translations throughout the brave primitive lattice so basically we have already seen that if you translate a lattice point along the lattice vector it will coincide with itself right so that is a translational uh, symmetry operator moving along the lattice vectors in addition to that you have something called point symmetry operators which leave at least one point fixed when you are actually performing this operation and then you also have operations which might involve successive applications of both one and two so these are different kinds of symmetry operations that are possible which will essentially uh, make the lattice coincide with itself okay so we will look at these definitions a little bit later when we actually have covered point groups and space groups okay so we will now talk about various symmetry elements that actually exist okay that actually we can work with the first one is called as the rotation okay rotation so rotate about an axis until the system is indistinguishable for example if you take this molecule so there are two atoms here okay so by how much how what angle should i rotate it so that this is indistinguishable 180 degrees so 180 degrees if i rotate it it becomes indistinguishable <coughs> so this is called a two fold rotation because 360 divided by 180 is two it's called a two fold rotation so this object possesses a two fold rotation symmetry right and once again if you rotate it 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 is the same thing again there is no difference uh, between what you started off with and what you end with okay so this is a two fold rotation now this object here possesses a three fold rotation right if you rotate it by 120 degrees the object appears indistinguishable this one is four fold rotation and this one is a six fold rotation what is missing five fold rotation is missing what about seven fold rotations eight fold rotations so the question is what happens to these rotations where are they why did i not talk about them we'll continue in the next class